Welcome back scientists and engineers. It is great to see everybody again this week. Remember last week we built some awesome Lego bridges and I hope some of you have your bridges still built. I hope that some of you were able to make your bridges taller or longer or stronger after the video was done last week. I know you all are great builders so if you have any pictures of your bridges I would love to see them. Um, and since we built an awesome Lego project last week, that means that this week we get to do a science experiment. And I am very excited for today's experiment because it's actually two experiments using the same materials, which is really cool. Okay. Now, before we do our experiment today, if you need to get any wiggles out, I want to give you 10 seconds to get some wiggles out, get some shakes out, because remember that when we do our science experiment, we want to make sure that we're nice and calm and we're focused and we're ready to listen to instructions and we're ready to use all of our senses. So we need to be ready to use our sense of sight, our hearing, our sense of smell and our sense of touch. But remember, we're not going to use our sense of taste unless our parents or a teacher says it's OK to taste the science experiment. OK, and today we're not going to taste our experiment. We're going to use our other four senses. OK, scientists. Now. Today's experiment is cool because we're going to use some supplies that you hopefully have at your house. Okay, in this cup is regular tap water and vegetable oil. Okay, and you can, it's kind of hard to tell with the lighting, but the top half of it is the oil and the bottom half of it is the water. Okay, you can see a little better when it's behind my white shirt. You can see that the top part is yellow and the bottom part is clear. Okay, so this is the vegetable oil up here, and this is the water down here. Now, it doesn't matter which one you pour in first, okay, because whenever you pour oil and water together, they're always going to separate, okay, because the molecules that make up the liquid, they don't like to be with the other liquid, okay? So all the oil molecules like to get together with the oil molecules and all the water molecules like to get together with the water molecules. So even if we take a stir or a straw like this and we spin it around, we can mix it up for a little bit, but then when I'm done spinning, you can see it kind of like a tornado in there. When I'm done spinning, all of the water's gonna go back down to the bottom and all the oil's gonna come back up to the top. Okay, now the oil is always on the top. So even if you started by dumping the oil in first and then you dump the water in on top of it, the water would go straight through the oil and sink down to the bottom because the oil is less dense than the water, which means it's not as heavy. So it's gonna float to the top, okay? Now the first experiment we're gonna do today with our vegetable oil and our water is called fireworks in a cup. Okay, scientists, so all we have is our regular tap water that came right out of the sink on the bottom and our vegetable oil that's we can, that you can get from the store or your parents might already have in their kitchen on the top. Now, people use vegetable oil to cook lots of different things. You can fry things in them like tortillas or french fries, or you can use it to cook almost any kind of food. Okay, or scientists, but today we're going to use it for a science experiment. Now, these are food coloring okay and you can also use watercolor if you have any watercolor paint at your house you can use that as well okay but this right here is food coloring scientists and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the food coloring and i'm going to put some drops right into the top of the cup okay and when i put a drop in normally when you put a drop of food coloring or watercolor into water, it kind of spreads out, right? And it will make the whole water change colors. But when we put it into this cup, watch what happens when it hits the oil. You can see it stays like a ball, scientists. Okay, so you can see a little bit of ball on top, and then there's a ball right in the middle right where the vegetable oil and the water sit. So I'm gonna put a couple more in here and you can see it fall down. And it doesn't spread out, it stays in a ball because remember this food coloring or water color, this is water, okay? And water molecules don't want to mix with the oil molecules. So the water molecules are gonna to stay together in a tight ball so that they don't mix with the oil that's outside of it. 
Now I'm gonna take I'm gonna take some red food coloring. And I'm gonna add some of that in, and the same thing's gonna happen. It's gonna fall, and then it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the top of that last one that's sitting, and it's actually sitting right in between where the oil and the water separate. Okay, and then there's a little ball on top, so you're seeing the balls on the top that I'm putting down, and then you can see some that are in the middle. Let me see if I can move my camera just a little bit to make it easier to, oh, there, just one. Did you see that one, the blue one? Okay, so that's why it's called fireworks in a cup because, oh, and there goes a red one. Because when the watercolor breaks through the barrier and gets into the water, then it makes a big explosion, almost like a firework going up into the sky. So when it's going down through the oil, it stays together. And then when it gets into the water, that's when it explodes. Okay, kind of like how a firework shoots up into the sky and it stays into a ball. And then when it explodes, you can see the colors go everywhere. Okay, so this next one, I'm gonna see if I can move my camera a little bit just so you can see where it sits. All right, now I'm gonna add some green colors. And you can see scientists that there's still some of those balls that are on the top. They're just floating right on the top, okay? So now let's see. And you can see the trails right here of where the blue and the red one fell. Oop, that one just fell from the top. Oh, and there goes a red one on the side, one of our fireworks. There we go. Now you can see, see they're sitting right in the middle of where the water and the oil are separated, okay? And they aren't big enough. They're not big enough to break through on their own. So some of them will break through, the bigger ones will break through, and some of the smaller ones won't. So now, see, I'm going to add some more blue ones. And you can put them in different spots and see if that changes, whether they fall or sink. All of those ones, oh, there, oh, you see the green one go, that green firework? Okay, so now, of course, if you have different colors, this one's purple, you can add whatever colors you want. There goes a big one that just fell. Oh, there goes one down the side. And then you can see that every time they break through to the water, that's when the firework explodes, scientists. There goes a green one again. Let's see if one of the purple ones can fall. That's how you know you're having a good experiment once you get your hands, whoa, nice and bright. You can still see there's a couple that are waiting to break through. How cool is that, scientists? Now, I have my pipette, like the ones that we use in our science experiments. Okay, but if you don't have a pipette, that's okay. You can also use a straw. And remember that with my pipette, we squeeze it out, squeeze the air out, squeeze the air out, and then put it in. And then we let go and that will suck up the liquid and then we squeeze it back out to make the liquid go out. You can still see some of my fireworks that are breaking through. Oh, you see that when I squished it down, it sent all the balls, the air pressure pushed those ones that were on the top back down. I'm gonna add a little more red because I feel like we have lots of blue coming through right now. So let's add some more red ones. And remember scientists, you can dump all of this in at once if you want but we wanna make this experiment last as long as possible, okay? So I recommend spacing it out, okay? Because just like if you were at a fireworks show, you wouldn't wanna see all the fireworks go off at once, right? You would wanna space it out and make it a really long show. So that's what I'm doing right now with this. Okay, now we're gonna add a couple more green ones. There we go, now they can see they start falling. Okay, so now I'm gonna have my pipette. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze it out. Squeeze the air out, push it down, and soak some of it up. And then I'm going to put it back in. Okay, now these balls are going to fall a little bit faster. And now you can also start to mix the colors that are on the bottom. Okay, so if you have red and blue fireworks that you've been putting down there, what color do you think it's going to be on the bottom? Yeah, it's probably going to be purple, right? Or if you mixed red and yellow, if 
fireworks, then the bottom color is probably going to be orange once they combine. How cool is that, huh, scientists? Now, if we look on here, let me move the camera. You can see how many balls are waiting. Look at that. You can see it better from the side. Look at all the ones that are sitting right where they want to break through. And now I'm going to get my pipette, and you can see that we can kind of push them through here. How cool does that look, huh, scientists? And then we can suck some of them back up, push them back down. And you can make it, if you do this for long enough, you can make it, there'll be a whole layer of bubbles in between the water and the oil. So you can have water on the bottom, a whole layer of water bubbles, and then the oil on the top. And then it's cool because once you start to mix the water and the oil a little bit, let's see if I can get it just perfect in here. Once you start to mix the water and the oil, and what I'm doing is I'm sucking up the bubbles right from the middle level. It kind of looks like a miniature galaxy in there, huh? Doesn't that look so cool? Because part of what's in this pipette right here is, is oil, and then all of the little bubbles inside, those are all water, water bubbles. Because remember, it doesn't matter how big the water bubble is, water never wants to mix with oil, and oil never wants to mix with water. Okay, scientists? Let's get one more little cool galaxy one. So if you have a straw, if you have a straw at home, you can do the same thing. Okay, scientists, remember with our straw, what we do is we put the straw in the cup, we put our finger on top of the straw, and that holds the liquid in. It doesn't let any air escape. That looks cool, doesn't it? And then we lift the straw up, and that will soak up some of the water and the oil. So that's how you can make your own little galaxies in the straw, okay? And then once we lift our finger up off the straw, Okay, then that will let all the water fall back down. Okay, scientists? So the more you do this, the more bubbles you're going to get, and the bubbles will actually start to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, and you can make this look like almost a full galaxy in a cup, which is so cool. Okay, so that's called our fireworks in a cup experiment. Okay, scientists? And if you have a bigger cup and you have lots of vegetable oil to work with, then you can make it, you can make way more bubbles. You can make it last way longer. Okay. But even if you only have a small cup and a really small amount of vegetable oil, you can still do this experiment for a long time and make it look really cool. Okay. Now, are we ready for our second experiment with our vegetable oil and water? Okay. So the only thing I'm going to add to this experiment that wasn't in there before is some cool shiny confetti pieces. Now, you can use anything you want that's shiny, okay, and bright colored. It is totally up to you. If you have anything in your room or your house or if your parents have anything, and if they don't have anything, that is totally okay. It's just an additional cool thing we can add to this project. This one, scientists, is called a lava lamp. Okay, and I don't know if you've ever seen a lava lamp before, but if you have, it's a really cool chemical reaction that makes lots of big, colorful bubbles, and they kind of float around a big jar like blobs. Okay, so we're going to see if we can make this project kind of look like a lava lamp. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to poke some of these down because these pieces right here, if you put them on the top, they're going to float because there's no liquid on top of them. But then once you push them down a little bit and you get some liquid to sit on top of them, then they get heavier and then they sink. Okay. So I'm just going to try to push as many down as I can. You see, I got a snowflake in there, right? I just went and got any cool, bright, shiny things that I have because we want to make our lava lamp look as cool as possible. And you'll see, you can see that these also are floating on top 
of the water. They're, st they're also sitting in the oil, okay? And the last thing we need for this experiment, scientists, okay, is that Alka-Seltzer tablet. And do you remember which project we used this Alka-Seltzer tablet for a couple weeks ago? We used it for the chemical rocket experiment, okay? Because remember this Alka-Seltzer tablet, when we put it in water, it releases a ton of bubbles and gas. And remember with our, with our chemical rocket experiment, we put it in the bottle and we seal it up so none of that gas could escape. And remember, we flipped it upside down and then that would create so much pressure and energy with that chemical reaction, it made our rocket launch up high, okay? So this time, we're not gonna seal it, okay? So that the air, so that the gas can escape when we put it in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it into little pieces. Okay, scientists? I'm gonna break it into little pieces and I'm gonna drop it in and watch what happens when the bubbles start to be released. You can see little bubbles coming up there. You can see some right there. They're starting to bubble. They're starting to pop up a little bit. Okay, and remember, just like some chemical reactions, it might take a little bit of time, and that's okay. That's why we got our wiggles out early because we want to be nice and patient because some of the coolest experiments take a long time to happen. And you can see it start to bubble up, scientists. Now I'm going to... I'm going to get one that's just a little bit bigger and you can see that what it does is it brings some of the bubbles up and then once they get to the top they start to sink back down like you see that big one in the middle right there that big one in the middle right here it's starting to sink back down Cool is that scientists so what this is doing is it's actually the gas the gas bubbles that are released when we put the Alka-Seltzer tablet in those gas bubbles are sticking to the water molecules and then it's bringing those water molecules up through the oil but remember that anytime water is inside of oil the water wants to stay together and the oil wants to stay together so even as the water shoots up into the oil it still stays in its own little balls and it doesn't mix with the oil okay and some of them are also sticking to these shiny pieces that we used and if you listen closely you can actually hear some of the bubbles popping when they come up to the top Can you hear that, scientists? And do you like how I used my, the Lego bin as our platform today? I thought that would be a cool platform to use. Now I'm gonna start stirring it around a little bit. And then if I take the pipette and I, and I don't squeeze the air out before I put it in, and then I put it in, and then I squeeze air out, we can also get it to shoot up like that, okay? Because all that air pressure that's in the pipette right here, when I squeeze it out, all that air pressure goes down into the watercolors, and then it makes them bubble up nice and big, and you can see it can make really big lava lamp bubbles. You can ask your parents if they know what a lava lamp is or if they ever had one and if they might be able to pull up a picture for you so you can see it okay and you can tell that once I mixed a lot of the colors together it's kind of gotten black down there which I'm sure you've seen if you paint and you mix a lot of colors together it'll get black so that's why I recommend starting with only two colors when we first do the firework in a cup experiment and then you can start adding more and more and of course scientists if you have more Alka-Seltzer tablets you can add more as you wish you can keep doing this experiment for a really, really long time if you never run out of Alka-Seltzer tablets, okay? Because this isn't one of those chemical reactions like with baking soda and vinegar where there's only so much energy stored up in the chemicals and once you use it all up, it's gone. This one, every Alka-Seltzer tablet has a lot of gas and energy that's built into it. 
So every new tablet you, ha you have, you're going to be able to start a whole new chemical reaction, okay? And remember, this project was called the Lava Lamp Scientists, and the first one was called Fireworks in a Cup, okay? And I would love it if you could send me a picture or video of you doing this. This is a really cool one. If you have a younger brother or sister, it might be a little messy for them to do it, but they will love to watch you do it because it looks so cool. And like a lot of cool science and engineering projects, it looks a lot like magic, right? We know how to use chemical reactions to, to do our own science magic tricks. Okay, and this one looks a lot like that. You can also, you can also send a video of you doing this to your aunt or your uncle or your grandma or your grandpa and it will blow their mind because it looks so cool and nobody knows how you can do it if they don't know the science behind it, okay? So scientists, thank you so much for doing these two experiments with me. I hope you have a lot of fun doing them at home and if you don't have the supplies right now, that's okay. Remember that as long as we know how it works, then whenever we do have the supplies, we can do it, okay? And maybe you can find something else in your house that can make, that can cause some of these same chemical reactions. Okay, scientists? I hope you have a great day. And next week, I will send you another awesome Lego project that we can do together. Thank you so much for all your hard work today, scientists. I will see and build with you soon.